The Rover, or The Banished Cavaliers by Afra Ben. Act one, scene one, a chamber. Enter Florinda and Helena. What an impertinent thing is a young girl bred in a nunnery. How full of questions. Prithee, no more, Helena. I have told thee more than thou understands already. The more is my grief. I would fain know as much as you, which makes me so inquisitive. Nor is it enough to know you're a lover unless you tell me to who tis you sigh for. When you are a lover, I'll think you fit for a secret of that nature. Tis true. I was never a lover yet. But I begin to have a shrewd guess what tis to be so, and fancy it very pretty to sigh and sing and blush and wish and dream and wish and long and wish to see the man and when i do look, look pale and tremble just as you did when my brother brought home the fine english colonel to see you what do you call him don belvo why helena <laughs> that blush betrays you i'm sure tis so or is it don antonio the Viceroy's son, or perhaps the rich Don Vincentio, whom my father designs for your husband? Why do you blush again? With indignation. And how near soever my father thinks I am to marrying that hated object, <laughs> I shall let him see. I understand better what's due to my beauty, birth, and fortune and more to my soul than to obey those unjust commands. Now hang me if I don't love thee for that dear disobedience. I love mischief. But tell me, dear Florinda, don't you love that, that fine Anglis? <laughs> for I bow next to loving him myself. Don't please me the most that you do so, for he's so gay and so handsome. Helena, a maid designed for a nun, ought not to be so curious in a discourse of love. And dost thou think that I'll ever be a nun? Faith, no, sister, and that which makes me long to know whether you love Belle is because I hope he has some mad companion or other that will spoil my devotion. Nay, I'm resolved to provide myself this carnival. Pithy, be not so wild. Uh, now you have provided yourself with a man. You take no care for poor me. Prithee, tell me, what dost thou see that is unfit for me in love? Have I not a world of youth, a humor gay, a beauty passable? And sense enough to know how all these might ought be employed to the best advantage? Yes, I do and will. Therefore, lay aside your hopes of my being a devotee and tell me how you came acquainted with this Belleville, for I perceive you knew him before he came to Naples. Yes, I knew him at the siege of Pamplona. He was the colonel of a French horse who, when the town was ransacked, nobly treated my brother and myself, preserving us from all insolencies. I must own, I have, I know not what that pleads kindly for him about my heart and will suffer no other to enter. Good morrow, sister, and pray, when saw you your lover, Don Vincentio? Uh, I know not, sir, for I consider it so little. I know not when it was. Uh, I have a command from my father here to tell you you ought not to despise him, a man of so vast a fortune and such a passion for you. Stefano, my things. A passion for me? Tis more than I ever saw or had a desire to should be shown. I hate Vincentio and I would not have a man so dear to me as my brother follow the ill customs of our country and make a slave of his sister. And sir, my father's will, I'm sure you may divert. I know not how dear I am to you, but I wish only to be ranked in your esteem 
equal with the English Colonel Belleville. Why do you frown and blush? Is there any guilt belongs to the name of that cavalier? I'll not deny I value Belleville. When I was exposed to such dangers as the licensed lust of common soldiers threatened, when rage and conquest flew through the city, then Belleville threw himself into all the dangers to save my honor. And will you not allow him my esteem? Yes, pay him what you will in honor, but... You must consider Don Vincentio's fortune and the jointure he'll make you. Let him consider my youth, beauty, and fortune, which ought not to be thrown away on his age and jointure. <sighs> Tis true, he's not so young and fine a gentleman as that uh, Belleville, but what jewels will that cavalier present you with? Those of his eyes and his heart? Oh, not any better than any Don Vincentio has brought from the Indies? <laughs> How now? Has your nunnery breeding taught you to understand the value of hearts and eyes? Better than to believe Vincentio deserves value from any woman. Go up to your devotion. You are not designed for the conversation of lovers. It's not enough for you to make a nun of me, but you must cast my sister away too, exposing her to a worse confinement than a religious life. <laughs> The girl's mad. Is it a confinement to be carried into the country to an ancient villa belonging to the family of the Vincentios these 500 years, seeing all her own that meets her eyes, fine air, large fields and gardens where she may walk and gather flowers? If these be her daily divertisements, what are those of the night? to lie in a wide moth-eaten bedchamber with furniture in fashion in the reign of King Sancho I, the bed that which his forefathers lived and died in. Very well. And this man you must kiss and nuzzle through his beard to find his lips, and you must submit for three or four years and all for a jointure. For all your character of Don Vincentio, she is as like to marry him as she was before. <laughs> marry Don Vincentio? Hang me, such a wedlock would be worse than adultery with another man. If I had to see her in the hostel de Dieu to waste her youth there in vows and be a handmaid than to lose it in such a marriage. Oh. <laughs> you have considered, sister, that Belleville has no fortune to bring you to, uh, is banished to this country, despised at home and pitied abroad? Uh, what then? The, the viceroy's son is better than that Don Vincentio? Callus. Take her hence and lock her up all this carnival, and at length she shall begin her everlasting penance in a monastery. I care not. I had rather be a nun than be obliged to marry as you would have me if I were designed for it. Do not fear the blessing of that choice. You shall be a nun. Shall I so? You may chance to be mistaken in my way of devotion. Yes, I am like to make a fine nun. No, I'll have a saint of my own to pray to shortly, if I like any that dares venture on me. Oh, Callus, uh, make it your business to watch this wild cat. As for you, Florinda, I've only all this while urged my father's will. But mine is that you would love Antonio. He's brave and young and all that can complete the happiness of a gallant maid. In this absence of my father will give us opportunity to free you from Vincentio by marrying here, which you must do tomorrow. T tomorrow? Tomorrow, or, or it will be too late. Uh, it is not my friendship to Antonio which makes me urge this, but love to thee and hatred to Vincentio. Therefore, resolve upon tomorrow. Sir, I shall strive to do as shall become your sister. I'll both believe and trust you. Adieu. As become his sister? That is to be as resolved in your way as he is his. I never till now perceive my ruin so near. My ruin near. I've no defense against Antonio's love, for he has all the advantages of nature, the moving arguments of youth and fortune. We hurt you, Callus. 
You will not be so cruel to lock me up, indeed, will you? I must obey commands I hate. Yeah. Besides, you consider what a life you're going to lead? <laughs> yes, callous, that of a nun. Until then, I'll be indebted a world of prayers to you if you let me know what I never did, the divertisements of a carnival. What? Go and masquerade? It will be a fine farewell to the world, I take it. Pray, what would you do there? Which all the world does, as I am told, be mad as the rest and take all innocent freedom. Sister, you'll go too, will you not? Come, pretty, be not sad. We'll outwit twenty brothers, if you'll be ruled by me. Come put off this dull humor with your clothes and assume one as gay and as fantastic as the dress my cousin Valeria and I have provided. Let's ramble. Alice, will you give us leave to go? Yes. I have a useful itch of my going myself. Madam, if I thought your brother might not know it, I might wait on you. But by my truth, I'll not trust young girls alone. Thou seest my brother's gone already, and thou shalt attend and watch us. Madam, the habits are come. Your cousin Valeria is dressed and stays for you. Tis well. I'll write a note, and if I chance to see Belleville and want an opportunity to speak to him, that shall let him know what I've resolved in favor of him. Come, let's in and dress us. Scene two, a long street. <sighs> Why, what the devil ails the Colonel in a time when all the world is gay? Hast thou been long enough in Naples to have been in love, I should have sworn some such judgment had befallen thee. No, I have made no new amour since I came to Naples. You left none behind you in Paris. Neither. And I can't divine the cause then, unless the old cause, the want of money. And another old cause, the want of a wench. Would not that revive you? You're mistaken, Ned. Nay, shirtlickens, then thou art past cure. I have found it out. Thou hast renewed thy acquaintance with the lady that cost thee so many sighs at the siege of Pamplona. Pox on it, what do you call her? Her brother's a noble Spaniard, nephew to the dead general Florinda. I Florinda, and will nothing serve thy turn but that damned virtuous woman, whom on my conscience thou lovest in spite too, because thou seest little or no possibility of gaining her? Thou art mistaken. I have interest enough in that lovely virgin's heart to make me proud and vain were it not abated by the severity of a brother, who perceiving my happiness- As civilly- has civilly forbid thee the house tis so to make way for a powerful rival the viceroy's son who has the advantage of me in being a man a fortune a spaniard and her brother's friend which gives him liberty to make his court whilst i have no recourse only to whilst i have recourse only to letters and distant looks from her window <laughs> By this light, the man is quite spoiled. F Frederick, what the devil are we made of that we cannot be thus concerned for a wench? Shirtlickens, our cupids are like the cooks of the camp. They can roast or boil a woman, but they have none of the fine tricks to make the sauce pleasant. Uh, I dare swear I have had a hundred as young, kind and handsome as this florin and dogs eat me if they were not as troublesome to me in the morning as they were welcome overnight. And yet, I warrant, he would not touch another woman if he might have her for nothing. That's thy joy, the cheap whore. Why, I love a frank soul. <coughs> when did you ever hear of an honest woman that took a man's money? I warrant him good ones, but I thank my star. As I have more grace than to forfeit my estate by cavaliering. Ha! Dear Belleville, noble colonel. Well, more. Welcome ashore, 
My dear Rover, what happy wind blew us this good fortune? Let me salute you, my dear Fred. How is it, honest lad? Faith, sir, the old compliment. Infinitely the better to see my dear mad Wilmore again. Uh, prithee, why camest thee ash thou ashore? And, and where's the prince? He's well, and reigns still lord of the watery element. I must aboard again within a day or two, and my business ashore was only to enjoy myself a little this carnival. Pr pray, know our new friend, sir. He is but bashful, a raw traveler, but honest, stout, and one of us. That you esteem him gives him an interest here. Your servant, sir. But well, Faith, I'm glad to meet you again in a warm climate where the kind sun has its godlike power still over the wine and woman. Love and mirth are my business in Naples. Enter several men in masking habits, some playing on music, others dancing after. Women dressed like courtesans with papers pinned to their breasts and baskets of flowers in their hands. Shadlicans, what have we here? Now the game begins. Mine, pretty creatures, may a stranger have leave to look and love. What's here? Roses for every month. Roses for every month? What means that? They are, or would have you think, they're courtesans who here in Naples are to be hired by the month. Kind and obliging to inform us. Pray, where did these roses grow? I would fain plant some of them in a bed of mine. Beware such roses, sir. Pox of fear. I might but strow such roses over and, <laughs> and under me, fair one, which you would give me leave to gather at your bush. The woman puts herself into the hands of a man and exit. Nay, you should not leave me so. By all means, use no violence here. Death. And just as I was going to be damnably in love and to have led her off, I could pluck that rose out of his hand. No friend to love like a long voyage at sea. Except a nunnery, Fred. Death. But will they not be kind, quickly be kind? Thou knowst I'm no tame sire, but a rampant lion in the forest. Two men dressed all over with horns of several sorts, making grimaces at one another with papers pinned on their backs, advance from the farther end of the scene. Oh, the fantastical rogues, how they are dressed. Tis pretty to see these Italians start swell and stab at the word cuckold and yet stumble at horns on every threshold. <laughs> <laughs> See what's on their back. Flowers for every night. Aha, rogue and more sweet than roses of every month. <laughs> what think you of those grave people? Is awake in Essex half so mad or extravagant? I like their somber grave way. It is a kind of legal authorized fornication where the men are not chid for it nor the women despised as amongst our dull English. But see another crew. Enter Florinda, Helena, and Valeria, dressed like fortune tellers. Callis and Lucetta, Filippo and Sancho in masquerade. Sir, there's your Englishman, and with him a handsome, proper fellow. I'll do him, and instead of telling his fortune, try my own. Dear, pretty, and I hope young devil. Will you tell an amorous stranger what luck he's like to have? Without looking in your hand, I have a parlous guess. Tis some foolish heart you mean. An inconstant English heart, as little worth stealing as your purse. Nay, then thou dost steal with the devil, that's certain thou hast guessed it. Right as if thou hadst been one of the number it has languished for. I find you better acquainted with it, nor can you take it in better time for... I am come from sea, and I have a world of love in store. Would you would be a good natured and take some of it off my hands? <laughs> Why, I could be inclined that way, but for a foolish vow, I am going to make to die a maid. <laughs> Thou art damned without redemption, and I am a good Christian. I ought in charity to divert so wicked a design. Therefore, prithee, dear creature, 
let me know quickly when and where I shall begin to sell a helping hand to do so good a work. <laughs> if you should prevail with my tender heart, as I begin to fear you will, for you have horrible loving eyes, there will be a difficulty in it that you'll hardly undergo for my sake. Faith, child, I have been bred in dangers and wear sword that has been employed in worse curls. <laughs> then for kind woman, name the danger, let it be anything but a long siege, and I'll undertake it. Can you storm? Oh, most furiously. What think you of a nunnery wall? For he that wins me must gain that first. Ha, huh, a nun. Oh, how I love thee for it. There's no sinner like a young saint. I perceive, Father Captain, you would impose no severe penance on her who was inclined to console herself before she took orders. By this hand, tis more meritorious to leave the world when thou hast taken and proved the pleasure on it, then twill be a virtue in thee, which now will be pure ignorance. I perceive, good father captain, you design only to make me fit for heaven. But if, on the contrary, you should quite divert me from it and bring me back to the world again, when I begin, I fancy I shall love like anything. I never tried it yet. Oh, I long to come first to the banquet of love and such a swinging appetite I bring. Oh, I'm impatient. Thy lodging, sweetheart, thy lodging, or I'm a dead man. <laughs> Why must we be guilty of either fornication or murder if we converse with you men? And is there no, no difference between leave to love me and leave to lie with me? Faith, they were made to go together. Are you sure this is the man? When did I mistake your game? <laughs> if he be brisk, he'll venture to follow me. And then, if I understand my trade, he's mine. He's English too. And they say that's a sort of good nature, the loving people. And have generally so kind an opinion of themselves that a woman with any wit may flatter him into any sort of fool she pleases. She often passes by Blunt and gazes on him. He struts and cocks and walks and gazes on her. This woman watches me so. I shall get no opportunity to discover myself to him and so miss the intent of my coming. <clears throat> but as I was saying, sir, by this line, you should be a lover. I thought how right you guessed. All men are in love or pretend to be so. Come, let me go. I'm weary of this fooling. I will not till you have confessed whether the passion that you have vowed Florinda be true or false. Florinda. Softly. Thou hast named one who will fix me here forever. She'll be disappointed then. Who expects you this night at the garden gate? And if you'll fail not, she vows to die or make you happy. What canst thou mean? That which I say, farewell. Well, charming Sybil, stay, complete that joy, which as it is, will turn into distraction. Where must I be, at, at the garden gate? I know it, at night you stay. I'll sooner forfeit heaven than disobey. Madam, your brother's here. Take this to instruct you farther. Have a care, sir. What you promise, this may be a trap laid by her brother to ruin you. Do not disturb my happiness with doubt. You're pretty creature, a thousand blessings on thee. Still, in this habit, you say, and after dinner at this place. Yes, if you will swear to keep your heart and not bestow it between this time and that. Oh, by all the little gods of love, I swear I'll leave it with you. And if you run away, Way with it, those deities of justice will revenge me. 
Do you know the hand? Tis horrendous. All blessings fall upon the virtuous maid. Oh, friends, the welcome news. The softest letter. I might be made the happiest man the sun shines on. The reason of this mighty joy. See how kindly she invites me to deliver her from the threatened violence of her brother. Will you not assist me? I know not what thou meanst, but I'll make one at any mischief where a woman's concerned. But she'll be grateful to us for the favor, will she not? How mean you? How should I mean? Thou knowst there's but one way for a woman to oblige me. Don't profane. The maid is nicely virtuous. Ah, who pox. <sighs> then she's fit for nothing but a husband in let her go, Colonel. Peace, she's the Colonel's mistress, sir. Let her be the devil if she be thy mistress. I'll serve her name the way. Read here this postscript. 10 at night, at the garden gate of which I cannot get the key, I will contrive a way over the wall. Come attended with a friend or two, kind heart, if we three cannot weave a string to let her down the garden wall to her pity, but the hangman wove one for us all. Let her alone for that. Your woman's wit, your fair kind woman, will out trick a brother, but see, Ned Blunt is stolen out after the lure of a damsel. So he'll scarce find his way home again unless we get him cried by the bellman in the marketplace. And twins sound pretty. A lost English boy of 30. I hope tis some common crafty sinner, one that will fit him. It may be she'll sell him for Peru, the rogue sturdy and would work well in a mine. <laughs> At least I hope he, she'll dress him for our mirth. Cheat him of all and then have him well-favored, idly banged, and turned out naked at midnight. <laughs> Pretty, what humor is he of that you wish him so well? Why, of an English elder brother's humor, educated in a nursery, with a maid to tend him till 15, and lies with his grandmother till he's of age, one that knows no pleasure beyond riding to the next fair or going up to London with his right worshipful father in Parliament time, wearing gay clothes or making honorable love to his lady mother's laundry maid. A pox upon him, he's our banker and has all our cash about him and if he fail, we're all broke. Oh, let him alone for that matter. He's of a damned skin deep quality that will secure our stock. I know not in what danger it were indeed if the jilt should pretend she's in love with him, for tis a kind believing coxcomb. Otherwise, if he part with more than a piece of eight, geld him, for which offer he may chance to be beaten if she be a whore of the first rank. Tis a lucky devil to light upon so kind a wench. <laughs> thou hast a great deal of talk with thy little mystic. Couldst thou do no good upon her? Hang her. She was some damned honest person of quality. I'm sure she was so very free and witty. I would be bound to constancy this month to gain her. In the meantime, have you made no kind acquaintance since you came to town? You did not used to be honest so long, gentlemen. Faith, love has kept us honest. We have been all furred with a beauty newly come to town, the famous Paduana Angelica Bianca. What? The mistress of the dead Spanish general? Yes. She's now the only adored beauty of all the youth in Naples who put on all their charms to appear lovely in her sight. Their coaches, liveries, and themselves all gay as on a monarch's birthday to attract the eyes of the fair charmer. Well, she has the pleasure to behold all who languish for her that see her. Tis pretty to see with how much love the men regard her and how much envy the women. What gallant has she? None. She's exposed to sale and four days in the week she's yours for so much a month. The very thought of it quenches all manner of fire in me. Yet, prithee, let's see her. Let's first to dinner and after that we'll pass the day as you please. I will... But at night you must all be at my devotion. I will not fail you. Act two, scene one, the long street. 
Enter Belleville and Frederick in masking habits and Wilmore in his own clothes with a wizard in his hand. But why thus disguised and muzzled? Because whatever extravagances we commit in these spaces, our own may not be obliged to answer them. I should have changed my eternal buff too, but no matter, my little mystic would not have found me out then, for if she should change hers, it is impossible I should know her, unless I should hear her prattle, a pox on it. I cannot get her out of my head, pray heaven. If I ever do see her again, and she proved damnably ugly that I may fortify myself against her tongue. Have a care of love, for oh my conscience, she is not of a quality to give thee any hope. No oh, pox on them. Why do they draw a man in so? She has played with my heart so that twill never lie still. I've met with some kind of wench that will play the game with me. Oh, for arms, soft, kind, common, such as I fancy Angelica. This is her house. They have not dined yet. I perceive the picture is not out. Oh, I long to see the shadow of the fair substance a man may gaze on for nothing. Colonel, thy hand and thine, Fred. I have been an ass, a deluded fool, a very coxcomb from my birth till this hour and heartily repent my little faith. What the devil's the matter with thee, Ned? Oh, such a mistress, Fred. Such a girl. <laughs> where? Fred, I, where? Oh, so fond, so amorous, so toying and fine, and all for sheer love, ye rogue. Oh, how she looked and kissed. I cannot think I was awake, and yet... Methinks I see and feel her charm still. Fred, try if she have not left the taste of her balmy kisses upon my lips. Uh, where is she? Oh, what a dog was I to stay and stole England so long. How have I laughed at the colonel when he sighed for love? <sighs> but now the little archer has revenged him. And by his own dart, I can guess at all his joys. Dost know her name? Her name? No, Shirtlikens, what care I for names? She's fair, young, brisk, and kind, even to ravishment. And what a pox care I for knowing her by another title? Didst give her anything? Give her! Shirtlickens, dost think such creatures are to be bought? Give her, quoth he. Why, she presented me with this bracelet for the toy of a diamond, I used to wear. She expects me again tonight. My God, that's well. We'll all go. Not a soul! No, gentlemen! Well, sir, for all your person of quality... I shall be very glad to understand your purse be secure. Tis our whole estate at present. Come, sir, unload. Uh, yes, take the necessary trifle. Useless now to me that I am beloved by such a gentlewoman. Shirtlikens money. Here, take mine too. No, keep that to be cousined, that we may laugh. Cousined, death. Would I could meet with one that would cousin me all of the love I could spend tonight. Pox, tis some common whore upon my life. A whore? Yes, with such clothes, such jewels, such a house, such furniture, and so attended. A whore? Why, yes. Sir, they are whores in all those gay clothes and right jewels with great houses richly furnished with velvet beds, store of plate, handsome attendants, and fine coaches. Pox on it. Where do these fine whores live? Enter two bravos and hang up a great picture of Angelica's against the balcony and two little ones at each side of the door. See there, the fair sign to the inn where a man may lodge that's Fool enough to give her price. Shirtlikens, gentlemen, what's this? 
a famous courtesan that's to be sold. How? To be sold? Nay, then I have nothing to say to her. Sold? What impudence is practiced in this country? Come, let's be gone. I'm sure we're no chapmen for this commodity. Thou art none, I'm sure, unless thou could have her in thy bed at the price of a coach on the street. How wondrous. There she is. A thousand crowns a month? By heaven, as many kingdoms were too little. A plague of this poverty. What's this? A thousand crowns a month? Shirtlickens, here's a sum. Sure, tis a mistake. Hark you, friend. Does she take or give so much by the month? Thousand crowns? Why, tis a portion for the Infanta. See, here's more company. Let's walk off a while. Fetch me a thousand crowns. I never wish to buy this beauty at an easier rate. Uh, pretty, what said those fellows to thee? Madam, the first were admirers of beauty only, but no purchasers. They were men. Harry, with your price and picture, laughed at the sum, and so passed off. Uh, no matter, their wonder feeds my vanity, and he that wishes to buy gives me more pride than he that gives my price can make me pleasure. Madam, the last I knew through, through all his disguises to be Don Pedro, nephew to the general, and who was with him in Pamplona. Don Pedro? My old gallant's nephew, when his uncle died, he left him a vast sum of money. It is he who was so in love with me at Padua <laughs> and who used to make the general so jealous. Is this he that used to prance before our window and take such care to show himself an amorous ass? If I am not mistaken, he is the likeliest man to give you price. The man is brave and generous, but of a humor so uneasy and inconstant that the victory over his heart is as soon lost as won. But inconstancy is the sin of all mankind. Therefore, I am resolved that nothing but gold shall charm my heart. Oh, I'm glad on it, though. I wonder what his kept you from that general disease of our sex so long. I mean, that of being <coughs> in love. A kind but sullen star under which I had the happiness to be born. Yet I have had no time for love. The bravest and noblest of mankind have purchased my favors at so dear a rate, as if no coin but gold were current with our trade. But here's Don Pedro again, fetch me my loot, which is for him or Don Antonio, the Viceroy's son, that I have spread my nets. A thousand crowns. I had not the painter flattered her, I should not think it dear. Flattered her? By heaven, he cannot. I have seen the original, nor is there one charm here more than adorns her face and eyes, all this soft and sweet with a certain languishing air that no artist can represent. What I heard of her beauty before had furred my soul, but this confirmation of it has blown it into a flame. Ha! Sir, I have known you to throw away a thousand crowns on a worse face, and though you are near your marriage, you may venture a little love here. Florinda will not miss it. Ha! Florinda, short is Antonio. Florinda, name not those distant joys. There's not one thought of her will check my passion here. Florinda scorned it all my hopes defeated of the possession of Angelica? By heaven, she's charming fair. Oh, tis he 
The false Antonio! Friend, where must I pay my offering of love? My thousand crowns, I mean. That offering I have designed to make, and yours will come too late. Really be gone, I shall grow angry else, and then thou art not safe. My, my anger may be fatal, sir, as yours, and he that enters here may prove this truth. I know not who thou art, but I'm sure thou art worth my killing and aiming at Angelica. They draw and fight. Enter Wilmore, who draw and part at them. That's his fine doings. Filthing for the wench, I'm sure. Nay, Gad, if that would winner, I have as good a sword as the best of you. Put up. Put up and take another time and place, for this is designed for lovers only. We are prevented. Dare you meet me tomorrow on the Molo? For I have a title to a better quarrel, that of Florinda, in whose credulous heart thou hast made an interest and destroyed my hopes. Dare? I'll meet thee there as early as the day. We will come thus disguised, that whosoever chance to get the better, he may escape unknown. It shall be so. Who should this rival be? Unless the English colonel of whom I've oft heard Don Pedro speak. It must be he, and time he were removed, who lays a claim to all my happiness. Wilmore, having gazed all this while on the picture, pulls down a little one. What means this rudeness, sir? Restore the picture. Ha! Rudeness committed to the fair Angelica? Restore Indeed, the picture, no. sir. Indeed, I will not, sir. By heaven, you shall. Nay, do not show your sword. If you do by this dear bounty, I will show mine too. What right can you pretend to it? The possession, which I will maintain. You perhaps have 1,000 crowns to give for the original? No matter, sir, you shall restore the picture. Oh, Moretta, what's the matter? Or leave your life behind. Death you lie, I will do neither. Hold, I command you, if for me you fight. They fight, the Spaniards join with Antonio, blunt laying on like mad. They leave off and bow. Heavenly fair she is, a plague of her price. You, sir, you that appear a soldier, that first began this insolence. It's true. I did so, if you call it insolence, for a man to preserve himself. I saw your charming picture and was <laughs> wounded. Quite though for my soul, each pointed beauty ran, and wanting a thousand crowns to procure my remedy, laid this little picture to my bosom, which, if you cannot allow me, I'll resign. No, you may keep the trifle. <laughs> you shall first ask my leave and this. Fight again as before. Enter Belleville and Frederick who join with the English. Hold, will you ruin me? The Spaniards are beaten off. You are muted. Oh, madam, we're undone. A pox upon that rude fellow. He set on to ruin us. We shall never see good days till all these fighting poor rogues are sent to the galleys. Beat me at this sport, and I'll ne'er wear a sword more. The devil's in me for a mad fellow. Come, let's be gone with your Safe. And remember, these are Spaniards, the sort of people that know how to revenge an affront. You bleed. Will, I hope you are not wounded. <laughs> not much. A plague upon your dawns. What devil was it to them that I took the picture? Took it? Shirtlickens! We'll have the great one too. Tis ours by conquest. <laughs> Prithee, help me up and I'll pull it down. Oh, stay, sir, and ere you affront me further. Let me know how you durst commit this outrage. 
to you I speak, sir, for you appear like a gentleman. To me, madam, gentleman, your servant. Is the devil in me? Does not the danger of entering the house an incensed courtesan? <laughs> I thank you for your care, but there are other matters in hand. Let me go. Yes, to your lodging, if you will, but not in here. Death man shall murder thee. Oh, fear me not, shall I not venture where a beauty calls, a lovely, charming beauty. For fear of danger, it may be that she give me a favor, at least I shall have the pleasure of saluting her when I enter and when I depart. Pox shall as soon lie with thee as kiss thee and sooner stab than do either. You shall not go. Fear not, sir. All I have to wound with is my eyes. Oh, let him go, Shirtlikens. I believe the gentlewoman means well. Well, take thy fortune. Farewell, fool. Farewell. Ye, Colonel. The rogue stark mad for a wench. Scene two, a fine chamber. Enter Wilmore, Angelica, and Moretta. Insolent, sir, how durst you pull down my picture? Rather, how durst you set it up to tempt poor amorous mortals with so much excellence? It is all of this heaven and beauty shown to the move despair in those that cannot buy? And can you think the effects of that despair should be less extravagant than I have shown? I sent you to ask for my pardon, sir, not to aggravate your crime. I thought I should have seen you at my feet, imploring mm. it. You are deceived. I come to rail at you and to talk such truths too, as shall let you see it in the vanity of that pride, which taught you how to set up such a price on sin. For such it is, whilst that which is love's due is merely bartered for. Good weather beaten corporal, will you march off? We have no need of your doctrine, though you have of our charity. But at present, we have no scraps, sirrah. The price is too high in the mouth for you, therefore, troop, I say. Here, good forewoman of the shop, serve me, and I'll be gone. Keep it to pay your landress. Your linen stinks of the gun room, for here's no selling by retail. Thou hast sold plenty of thy stale ware at cheap rate. I the more silly kind heart, but this is an age wherein beauty is at higher rates. In fine, you know the price of this. I grant you. Tis here set down a thousand crowns a month. Bod, take your black lead and sum it up that I may have a pistol worth of these vain gay things and I'll trouble you no more. Pox on him, abominable fellow. I tell thee, we only sell by the whole piece. Tis very hard, the whole cargo over nothing. Faith, madam, my stock will not reach it. Yet I have countrymen in town, merchants of love like me. It'll see they put for a share. I am studying, madam, how to purchase you, though at present I am unprovided of money. Sure this from any other man would anger me, nor shall he know the conquest he has made. Poor angry man, how I despise this railing. Yes, I am poor, but I'm a gentleman. And one that scorns this baseness, which you practice, poor as I am, I would not sell myself, no, not to gain your charming, high-prized person, though I admire you strangely for your beauty, yet I contemn your mind. And yet, I would at any rate enjoy you at your own rate, but cannot see here the only sum I can command on earth 
I know not where to eat with this is gone, yet such a slave I am to love and beauty. This last reserve I'll sacrifice to enjoy you. Nay, do not frown, I know you are to be bought and would be bought by me if I could pay it down, which I happy knowledge would still repeat and lay to my heart and would soon cure those wounds which your eyes have made. His word go through me to the very soul. Sure, she's bewitched that she can stand thus tamely and hear his saucy wailing. Sirrah, will you be gone? How dare you take this liberty? Withdraw. Pray, tell me, sir, are you not guilty of the same mercenary crime? When a lady is proposed to you for a wife, you never ask how fair, discreet, or virtuous she is, but what's her fortune? Which, if it be small, you cry, she will not do my business, and basely leave her, though she languish for you. Say, is this not as poor? It is a barbarous custom, which I will scorn to defend in our sex and do despite eyes on yours. Thou art a brave fellow. Put up thy gold and know that were thy fortune as large as is thy soul, thou shouldst not buy my love. Couldst thou forget those mean effects of vanity which set me out to sail and as a lover prize my yielding joys? Canst thou believe they'll be entirely thine without considering they were mercenary? I cannot tell. I must bethink me first. Death, I'm going to believe her. Pretty confirm that faith. Or if thou canst not, flatter me a little. Twill please me from thy mouth. Curse on thy charming tongue. Dost thou return my feigned contempt with so much subtlety? <laughs> Thou hast found the easiest way into my heart, though yet I know all thou sayest is false. By all that's good, tis real. I never loved before, though oft a mistress. Shall my first vows be slighted? I know you take me for an errand ass, and that may be soothed into belief and then be used at pleasure, but madam, I have been so often cheated by perjured, soft, deluding hypocrites that I no faith left for cousining sex, especially with women of your trade. The lowest esteem you have of me perhaps may bring my heart again, for I have pride that yet surmounts my love throw off this pride, this enemy to bliss, and show the power of love. Has all my mighty expectation vanished? No, I will not hear thee talk. Thou hast cast a charm in every word that draws my heart away. And all the thousand trophies I designed thou hast undone. Why art thou soft? Thy looks are bravely rough, and Men for war, could thou not storm on still, perhaps, then had been as free as thou. Death, how she throws her fire about my soul. Take heed, fair creature, how you raise my hopes. There's not a boy thou hast in store that I shall not then command, for which I'll pay thee back my soul, my life. Come, let's begin the account this happy minute. And will, will you pay me then the price I ask? Oh, why dost thou draw me from an awful worship by showing thou art no divinity? Conceal the fiend and show me the angel. Keep me but ignorant and I'll be devout and pay my vows forever at this shrine. The pay I mean is but thy love for mine. Can you give that? entirely. Come, let's withdraw, where I'll renew my vows and breathe them with such ardor. 
Thou shalt not doubt my zeal. Oh, thou hast a power too strong to be resisted. <laughs> now my cars go with you. Is all our project fallen at this? Nay, to love such a, a very beggar whose business is to rifle and be gone? A no-purchase, no-pay rogue that fights for daily drink and takes a pride in being loyally lousy. <sighs> oh, oh, I could curse now if I durst. This is the fate of most whores. Trophies, which from believing fops we win, are spoils to those who cozen us again. Act three, scene one. A street, enter Florinda, Valeria, Helena, in antic different dresses from what they were in before, Callus attending. I wonder what should make my brother in so ill a humor. Oh, I hope he has not found out our ramble this morning. No, if he had, we should have heard of it on both ears and have been mewed up this afternoon, which I would not for the world should have happened. Hey, oh, I'm as sad as a lover's lute. He thinks Helena has been very serious. I would give my garters she were in love to be revenged upon her for, for abusing me. How is Helena? Oh, I would I have never seen my madness you are. And yet for all of your laughing, I'm not in love. And yet this small acquaintance of my conscience will never out my head. <laughs> I laugh to think how thou art fitted with a lover, a fellow that I warrant loves every new face he sees. Hmm. He has not kept his word with me here and may be taken up. That thought is not very pleasant to me. But what the do should this be now that I feel? What's it like? Nay, the Lord knows. But if I should be hanged, I cannot choose to be angry and afraid when I think that mad fellow should be in love with anybody but me. What to think of myself, I know not. Would I could meet with some true mystic that I might know my fortune. No, why, that's nothing so easy. Thou wilt love this wandering and constant till thou finds thyself hanged about his neck and then be as mad to get free again yes, so so now are you you are provided for there's no one taking care of poor me but since you have set my heart a wishing i am resolved to know for what i will not die of the pit so i will not <laughs> art thou mad to talk so <laughs> who will like thee well enough to have thee that here's what a mad wench thou art like me. I don't intend that every he that likes me shall have me, but he that I like. I should have stayed in the nunnery still if I had liked my lady abbess as well as she liked me. No, I came thence not, as my wise brother imagines, to take an eternal farewell to the world, but to love and be beloved. And I will be beloved, or I'll get one of your men, so I will. I wonder how you learned to love so easily. I had a thousand charms to meet my eyes and ears ere I could yield and twas the knowledge of Belleville's merit, not the surprising person took my soul. Thou art too rash to give a heart at first sight. Hang your considering lover. I ne'er thought beyond the fancy that I was a very pretty, idle, silly kind of pleasure to pass one's time with, in which I shall have my beauty praised, my wit admired, the little or none, and have the vanity and the power to know I am desirable. Then I have the more inclination that way because I am to be a nun. And so shall not be suspected to have any such earthly thoughts about me. But when I walk thus and sigh thus, they'll think my mind's upon my monastery. <laughs> what a mad creature is this? Oh, warrant if my brother hears either of you sigh, he cries, 
I fear you have the indiscretion to be in love, but take heed of the honor of our house and your own unspotted fame. Oh, but see, here comes your lover. But where's my inconstant? Now let's step aside, we may learn something. What means this? The picture's taken in. It may be the wench is good natured and will be kind gratis. Your friend's a proper handsome fellow. I rather think she has cut his throat and has fled. I am mad he should throw himself into dangerous pox on it. I shall want him tonight. Let's knock and ask for him. My heart goes pit a pat for fear tis my man they talk of. Oh, what would you have? Tell the stranger that entered here about two hours ago that his friends stay here for him. A curse upon him for Moretta? Would he were at the devil? But he's coming to you. I, I just hear. Oh, how this vexes me. And how, and how, dear lad, has fortune smiled? <laughs> We to break her windows or raise up altars to her. Does not my fortune sit triumphantly upon my brow? Have I not an air about my face and eyes that distinguish me from the crowd of common lovers? By heaven, Cupid's quiver has not half so many darts as her eyes. Oh, to sleep in her arms is lying fresco, all perfumed air about me. Here's fine encouragement for me to fool on. Well, sir. Let's go take a bottle and hear the story of your success. Come, let's be gay and wanton and gentlemen, study, study what you want. For here are friends that will supply gentlemen. Hark, what a charming sound they make. But hark ye, sir, you are not married, are you? All the honey of matrimony, but none of the sting, friend. Look, Shad Lickens, thou art a fortunate rogue. I am so, sir. Let these inform you how sweetly they chime. Shad Lickens, this I like well. It looks like my lucky bargain. Oh, how I long for the approach of my squire that is to conduct me to her house again. Why, here's two provided for. By this light, your happy men. Fortune is pleased to smile on us, gentlemen. Sir, my lady expects you. She has removed all that might oppose your will and pleasure and is impatient till you come. <laughs> Sir, I'll attend you. Oh, the happiest rogue. I'll take no leave lest they either dog me or stay me. But then the little mystic is forgot? A mischief on thee for putting her into my thoughts. I quite forgot her else. And this night's debauch had drunk her quite down. Had it so, good captain? I hope she did not hear. What, afraid of such champions? Oh, you're a fine lady of your word, are you not? To make a man languish a whole day. A tedious search of me. Begad, thou art in the right. Hadst thou seen what a melancholy dog I have been ever since I was a lover. How I have walked the street with my hands and my sleeves. Faith, sweetheart, thou wouldst pity me. Oh, now if I should be hanged, I can't be angry with him. He dissembles so hard on me. Alas, good captain, what pains you have taken. Now were I ungrateful not to reward so true a servant. Poor soul. That's kindly said. I see a, thou bearest a conscience. Come then. For a beginning, show me thy dear face. I'm afraid, my small acquaintance, you have been staying that swinging stomach you boasted of this morning. Is your stomach so queasy now? Faith, long fasting, child, spoils a man's appetite. Yet if you darst treat, I could so lay about me still. And you would fall too before a priest says grace. Oh, fie, fie. 
what an old out of fashion thing hast thou named thou couldst not dash me more out of countenance would still show me an ugly face heavens is he and passionately fond to see another woman what could you expect less from such a swaggerer Expect as much as I paid him a heart entire, which I had pride enough to think when e'er I gave it would have raised the man above the vulgar, made him all soul, and that all soft and constant. You see, Captain, how willing I am to be friends with you till time and ill luck make us lovers, and ask you the question first rather than put your modesty to the blush by asking me, for alas, I know you Captain are such strict men, severe observers of your vows to chastity, that it will be hard to prevail with your tender conscience to marry such a young willing maid. Do not abuse me for fear I should take thee at thy word and marry thee indeed, which I am sure would be rhythm sufficient. Oh my constance, that will be our destiny because we are both of one humor. I am as inconstant as you. For I have considered, Captain, that a handsome woman has a great deal to do while her face is good. And should I in these days of my youth catch a fit of foolish constancy, I were undone. Therefore declare, I'll allow but one year for love, one for indifference, and one year for hate. And then go hang yourself, for I profess myself the gay, the kind, the inconstant. The devil's int if this won't please you. Oh, most damnably. I have a heart with a hole quite through it. No prison like mine to keep a mistress in. Perjured man. How I believe thee now. Well, I see our business as well as humors are alike. Yours to cousin as many maids as will trust you, and I as many men as have faith. See, I have not as desperate a lying look as you can have for the heart of you. How do you like it, Captain? Like it, by heaven. I never saw so much beauty, not to be expressed, but silently adored. I can endure no more, nor is it fit to interrupt him, for if I do, my jealousy has so destroyed my reason, I shall undo him. Therefore, retire. And you, Sebastian, follow that woman and learn who tis while you tell the fugitive I would speak to him instantly. Prithee, dear stranger, be not so sullen, for though you have lost your love, you see my friend frankly offers you hers to play with in the meantime. Faith, madam, I am sorry. I can't play at her game. Believe me, noble stranger, I'm no common mistress, and for a little proof on it, wear this jewel. Nay, take it. Sirs, right, and bills of exchange may sometimes miscarry. Madam, why am I chosen out of all mankind to be the object of your bounty? Sir, from my window I have often seen you, and women of quality have so few opportunities for love that we ought to lose none. You tempt me strangely, madam, every way. And but for a vow I've made to a very fine lady, this goodness had subdued me. Tell me what you did in yonder house, and I'll unmask. Y yonder house. Oh, I went to. Uh, why, there's a friend of mine that lives there. What, a, a she or a he friend? A man, upon my honor, a, a man. And was your man friend that had more darts in his eyes than Cupid carries in a whole budget of arrows? Yeah, so. 
Mm. Ah, to be in her arms is lying in fresco, all perfumed air about me. Was this your man friend too? So. That gave you the gold that begets young pleasures? Ah, well, well, um, madam, there you see there are ladies in the world that will not be cruel. There are, madam, there are- And there be men too, as fine, wild, inconstant fellows as yourself. <laughs> there be, captain, there be, if you go to that now. Therefore, I'm resolved to no. see your face no more. Oh. Till tomorrow. Again? You frightened me. Nor then neither, unless you swear to never see that lady more. See her? Why, uh, never to think of womankind again. Kneel and swear. I do. Never to think, to see, to love, nor lie with any but thy self. Kiss the book. Oh, most religiously. Now what a wicked creature am I to damn a proper fellow. Madam, I'll stay no longer, tis in dark. However, sir, I'll leave this with you, that when I'm gone you may repent this opportunity you have lost by your modesty. will be an age till tomorrow. Until then, will I most impatiently expect you. Adieu, my dear pretty angel. Ha, Florinda's picture, to she herself. What a dull dog was I. I would have given the world for one minute's discourse with her. This comes of your modesty. Ah. Pox on your vow. It was ten to one we'd lost the jewel by it. Wilmore, the blessed, the blessed opportunity lost. Florinda, friends, Florinda. Ah. Whose picture is this? She's a fine wench. The colonel's mistress, sir. Come, come. A bottle will set thee right again. I'm content to try, and by that time it'll be late enough for our design. Agreed. Love does all day the soul's great empire keep, but wine at night lulls the soft god asleep. Now we are safe and free. No fears of the coming home of my old jealous husband. Now love is all the business of my soul. I am transported. Pox on that I had but some fine things to say to her, such as lovers use. I was a fool not to learn a little by heart before I came. Shirtlick and sweet soul, I am not used to compliment, but I am an honest gentleman and thy humble servant. I have nothing to pay for so great a favor, but such a love as cannot but be great, since at first sight of that sweet face and shame. It made me your absolute captive. Kind heart, how prettily she talks. Egad, I'll show her husband a Spanish trick, send him out of the world and marry her. She's damnably in love with me. Well, sir, I'll uh, go and uh, undress me. <laughs> Uh, and be with you instantly. Make haste then, for the Shadlikin's dear soul, thou canst not guess at the pain of a longing lover when his joys are drawn within the compass of a few minutes. You speak my sense, and I'll make haste to provide. 
tis a rare girl, and this one night's enjoyment with her will be worth all the days I ever passed in Essex. The scene changes to a chamber with an alcove bed in it, a table, and Lucetta in bed. Enter Sancho and Blunt, who take the candle of Sancho at the door. What? In bed, my sweet mistress? You see, I still outdo you in kindness. <laughs> and thou shalt see what haste I'll make to quit scores. Are you not undressed yet? As much as my impatience will permit. Hold, sir. Put out the light. It may betray us. Oh, anything. I need no other light but that of thine eyes. Puts out the candle and the bed descends. He gropes about to find it. Uh, why? Why? Where are you, sweetest? Ah, <laughs> the rogue's silent now. A pretty love trick, this. How <laughs> shall laugh at me and nod? You need not, my dear rogue. I'm all on a fire already. Come, come, now call me in for pity. Sure, I'm enchanted. I have been round the chamber and can find neither woman nor bed. I locked the door. I'm sure she cannot go that way. If she could, the bed could not. Enough, enough, my pretty wanton. Do not carry the jest too far. <laughs> Betrayed! Rogues! Pimps! Help! Lights on a trap and is let down. Ha <laughs> ha He's dispatched finally. Now, sir, had I been coy, we had missed of his booty. Nay, when I saw it was a substantial fool, I was mollified. But when you dote upon a serenading coxcomb upon a face, fine clothes and a lute, it makes me rage. You know I was never guilty of that folly, my dear Philippo, but with yourself. But come, let's see what we have got by this. A rich coat sword and hat. See here, a gold watch, a purse, ha, a bunch of diamond rings and one with a family arms. See the waistband of his breeches are lined with gold. But, well, for all this, I fear his being a stranger may make a noise and hinder our trade with them hereafter. That's our security. He is not only a stranger to us, but to the country too. The common shore into which he is descended, thou knowest, conducts him into another street, which this light will hinder him from ever finding again. He knows neither your name, nor the street where your house is, nay, nor the way to his own lodgings. And art not thou an unmerciful rogue? not to afford him one night for all this. Blame me not, Lucetta, to keep as much of thee as I can to myself. Come, that thought makes me want it. Let's to bed. Sancho, lock these up. Oh, Lord. <sighs> Got out at last. Uh, and now to damning and cursing. Oh, what a dog was I to believe. Oh, ignorant, conceited coxcomb. Uh, to fancy she could be enamored with my person at first sight. Enamored. Oh, I'm a cursed puppy. Tis plain, fool was writ upon my forehead. Had I been drunk, I might fondly have credited the young queen. 
But as I was in my right wits to thus be cheated, confirms I am a dull, believing Ingrid's country fop. She left me my clothes. I have a bill of exchange at home. Would have saved my credit. But now all hope is taken from me. Well, I'll home, if I can find the way, with this consolation. That if I am not the first kind believing coxcomb. Scene three, the garden in the night. Enter Florinda dressed in her nightgown with a key and a little box. Well, thus far, I'm on my way to happiness. I've got myself free from callous, my brother too. I have, by good fortune, got the key of the garden back door. I'll open it to prevent Belleville's knocking. A little noise now will alarm my brother. Belleville stays long, methinks. It's me. Stay for fear of a surprise. I'll hide these jewels in yonder jessamine. What the devil has become of these fellows, Belleville and Frederick? They promised us to stay the next corner for me, but who the devil knows where the corner of a full moon? Now, whereabouts am I? A female, by this light, a woman. I'm a dog if it may not be a very wench. He's come. Uh, who's there? Sweet soul. Let me salute thy shoestring. <laughs> Tis not my, my Belleville. Good heavens, I know him not. Who are you and from whence come you? <laughs> pretty, pretty. Not so many hard questions. Let it suffice, I am here. <laughs> come, come, kiss me. A good gods, what luck is mine? Only good luck, parlous good luck. Come hither, by this hand she's perfumed and smells like any nosegay. Pretty dear soul, let's not play the fool and lose time, precious time, for as God shall save me. I'm as honest a fellow as breathes, though I am a little disguised at present. Oh, heavens, what a filthy beast is this? I am so. And thou art no sooner lie with me for that reason and for there no be no sin in it. Because was neither designed nor premeditated, twas pure accident on both sides. Oh, I am ruined. Wicked man be gone. Wicked, he gotta judge. If he saw those eyes of thine would know twas they gave the first provocation. Sir, you must go. Or I'll call out. Aye, aye. You are best to call witnesses and see how finely you treat me. Do, why at this time of night was your cobweb door set open, dear spider, but to catch flies? Sir, can you think? That you'd do it for nothing? Oh, oh, I find what you'd be at. Look here, here's a pistol for you. Here, take it, take it, I say. For heaven's sake, sir, as you're a gentleman. So, now. She would be wheedling me for more. What, will you not take it when you resolved? You will not. Come, come, take it, or I'll put it up again. For, look ye, I never give more. The door is open. A pox of this mad fellow. I'm angry that we've lost him. He dares have sworn to follow us. You were so hasty, Colonel, to be gone. Oh, help, help. Ha! Huh. Sure, that's Florinda's voice. A man! Villain, let go of that lady! Belleville! Heavens! My brother, too, is coming, and will be impossible to escape. Belleville, walk under my chamber window from whence I'll give you some instructions what to do. This rude man has undone us. Belleville! I'm betrayed! Run! Stefano and see if Florinda be safe. They fight, and Pedro's party beats him out. Going out, meet Stefano. So they have, who, whoever they will be, all is not well. I'll do Florinda's chamber. You need not, sir. 
Uh, the poor lady is fast asleep and thinks no harm. I would not wake her, sir, for fear of frightening her. Oh, I'm glad she's there. Rascals, how came the garden door open? That question comes too late, sir. Some of my fellow servants masquerading, I'll warrant. Oh, masquerading. A lewd custom to debauch are you. There's something more in this than I imagine. Intermission. We will return at 9.06 p.m. Intermission is after this scene. It's before act four, not scene four. Thank you, Shay. Scene four, changes to the street. Enter Belleville in rage, Fred holding him and Wilmore melancholy. Why how the devil should I know Florinda? A plague of your ignorance. If it has not been for that must you be a beast, a, a brute, a senseless swine? Egad, you're very free with me, methinks. I was in good hopes the quarrel would have been on my side for so uncivilly interrupting me. Peace, brute, will start safe. Oh, I'm distracted. <sighs> nay, nay, I'm an unlucky dog, that's certain. A curse upon the star that ruled my birth or whatsoever other influence that makes me still so wretched. <laughs> Thou breaks my heart with these complaints. There is no star in fault, no influence, but sack, the cursed sack I drank. Why, how the devil came you so drunk? Why the devil came you so sober? A curse upon his thin skull, he was always before him that way. Prithee, dear Colonel, forgive him. He's sorry for his fault. He's always so after he has done a mischief, a plague upon all such brutes. By this light, I took her for an errant harlot. Damn your debauched opinion. Tell me, thought, had so, how, so much sense and light about thee to distinguish her to be a woman and could not see something about her face and person to strike an awful reverence into thy soul? Hey, no. I considered her as a mere woman as I could wish. It's death, I have no patience. Draw. Or I'll kill you. Let that be alone till tomorrow, and if I said it not all right again, use your pleasure. Tomorrow, damn it. The spiteful light will lead me to no happiness. Tomorrow is Antonio's and perhaps guides him to my undoing. Oh, that I could meet this rival, this powerful, fortunate. This is Angelica's house. I promised the kind baggage to lie with her tonight. Ah, you paid the thousand crowns I directed? To the lady's old woman, sir, I did. Hmm. Devil we have here. I'll now plant myself under Florinda's window, and if I find no comfort there, I'll die. Page! Here's my lord. What's this? A pickeroon going to board my frigate, and here's one chase gun for you. Oh, pluses, we're all undone! Help, Maria! Huh. The mad rogue's engaged in some unlucky adventure again. How, oh, a man killed? Oh, a man killed, then I'll go home to sleep. Who should it be? Pray heaven the rogue is safe for all my quarrel to him. So here's one dispatched. Secure the murderer. Do not mistake my charity for murder. I came to his assistance. That shall be tried. Sir, St. Jago, swords drawn in the carnival time. Hmm. Thy hand, prithee. Ha! Don Antonio, look well to the villain there. How's it, sir? Hmm. I'm hurt. Has my humanity made me a criminal? Away with him. What a cursed chance is this? Uh, this is the man that has set upon me twice. Carry him to my apartment until you have further orders from me. Now it's intermission. No, we'll return at 9 10.
Okay, and we're back. Act four, scene one, a fine room. When shall I be weary of railing on fortune, who is resolved never to turn with smiles upon me? Two such defeats in one night. None but the devil and the mad, that mad rogue could have contrived to, pl to have plagued me with. I am here a prisoner, yet this is nothing to the torture my soul bows with when I think of losing my fair, my dear Florinda. Sir, I came to know what injuries I have done you that could provoke you so mean an action as to attack me basely without allowing time for my defense. Sir, for a man in my circumstances to plead innocence would look like fear, but view me well and you will find no marks of a coward on me, nor anything that betrays that brutality you accuse me of. <laughs> In vain, sir, you impose upon my sense. You are not only he who drew on me last night, but yesterday before the same house, that of Angelica. I own I fought today in the defense of a friend of mine with whom you and your party were first engaged. Perhaps you think this crime enough to kill me, but if you do, I cannot fear you'll do it basely. <laughs> no, sir, I'll make you fit for a defense with this. This gallantry surprises me, nor know I how to use this present, sir, against a man so brave. You, you shall not need, for no, I come to snatch you from a danger that is decreed against you, and twas with so much courage you offended, I cannot see you punished. How shall I pay this generosity? It had been safer to have killed another than have attempted me. To show your danger, sir, I'll let you know my quality, and tis the viceroy's son whom you have wounded. The viceroy's son? Was this plague reserved to complete all the rest? The man of all the world I would destroy. You seem disordered, sir. Yes, trust me. Sir, I am, and tis with pain that man receives such bounties. Who wants the power to pay him back again? To gallant spirits, tis indeed uneasy. But you may quickly overpay me, sir. Then I am well, kind heaven. But set us even, that I may fight with him and keep my honor safe. <laughs> oh, I am impatient, sir, to be discounting the mighty debt I owe you. Command me quickly. I have a quarrel with a rival, sir about the maid we love? Death is Florinda, he means. That thought destroyed my reason, and I shall kill him. My rival, sir, is one has all the virtues man can boast of. He challenged me to meet him on the Molo as soon as day appeared, but last night's quarrel has made my arm unfit to guide a sword. I apprehend you, sir, you'd have me kill the man that lays a claim to the maid you speak of. I'll do it. I'll fly to do it. Sir, do you know her? No, sir. Uh, but tis enough, she is admired by you. Uh, sir, I shall rob you of the glory on it, for you must fight under my name and dress. That opinion must be strangely obliging that makes you think I can personate the brave Antonio, whom I can but strive to imitate. You say too much to my advantage. Come, sir, the day appears that calls you forth. Fantastic fortune, thou deceitful light, that cheats the weary traveler by night. Though on a precipice each step you tread, I am resolved to follow where you lead. Scene two, the Molo. Enter Florinda and Callis in masks with Stefano. I'm dying with my fears. Belleville's not coming as I expected underneath my window. Makes me believe that all those fears are true. 
Canst thou not tell when with whom my brother fights? No, madam, they were both in masquerade. I was by when they challenged one another, and they had decided to quarrel then, but were prevented by some cavaliers, which made them put it off till now, but I am sure tis about you they fight. Nay, thins with Belleville. For what other lover have I that dares fight for me except Antonio? And he is too much in favor with my brother. Madam, I must leave you, for if my master sees me, I shall be hanged for being your conductor. I escaped narrowly for the excuse I made for you last night in the garden. And I'll reward thee for it. Prithee, no more. Antonio is late today. The place will fill and we may, may be prevented. Antonio? Sure, I heard a miss. But who would not excuse a happy lover? Oh, sure, I had dwelt forever on her bosom. But stay, he's here. Tis not Belleville. Half my fears are vanished. Antonio! This must be he. You're early, sir. I do not use to be outdone this way. The wretched, sir, are watchful, and tis enough you have the advantage of me in Angelica. Angelica? Or I've mistook my man. Or else Antonio, can he forget his interest in Florinda and fight for common prize? Come, sir, you know our terms. By heavens, not I. No talking, I am ready, sir. Oh, hold, whoever you be, I conjure you bold. If you strike here, I die. Florinda. Florinda imploring from my rival? Oh wait, this kindness is unseasonable. Who are you, sir? She runs in just as Belleville disarms Pedro. Who are you, sir, that dare deny my prayers? By by all you hold most dear, by her you love, I do conjure you, touch him not. By her I love, see, I obey. Antonio, you've done enough to prove you love Florinda. Love Florinda? Does heaven love adoration, prayer, or penitence? Love her. Here, sir, your sword again. Upon this truth, I'll fight my life away. No, you've redeemed my sister and our friendship. Don Pedro. Can you resign your claims to other women and give your heart entirely to Florinda? Entire, as dying saints' confessions are, I can delay my happiness no longer. This minute, let me make Florinda mine. This minute let it be. No time so proper. This night my father will arrive from Rome and possibly may hinder what we propose. Oh heavens, this minute! Uh, the place begins to fill, uh, and that we may not be observed do you walk off to St. Peter's Church, where I will meet you and conclude your happiness. I'll meet you there. Oh, stay, sir and recall your hasty doom. Alas, I have not yet prepared my heart to entertain so strange a guest. Away, this silly modesty is assumed too late. Heaven, madam, what do you do? Do? Despise the man that lays a tyrant's claim to what he ought to conquer by submission. You do not know me. Move a little this way. Yes, you may even force me to the altar, but not the holy man that offers there shall force me to be thine. Oh, do not lose so blessed an opportunity. See, tis your Belleville, not Antonio, whom, you, whom your mistaken scorn and anger ruins. <laughs> Belleville? Where was my soul? It could not meet thy voice and take this knowledge in. No news of Belleville yet. Well, I am the most unlucky rascal in nature. I am deceived, or is, is it he? Look, Fred, 
is he, my dear Belleville? Runs and embraces him. Belleville's visitor falls out on On's hand. Hell and confusion sees thee. Ha! Belleville! I beg your pardon, sir. Nay, touch her not. She's mine by conquest, sir. I won her by my sword. Didst thou so? And egad, we'll keep her by the sword. Stop. Thou art so profanely lewd, so cursed by heaven, all quarrels thou espousest must be fatal. Nay, and you be so hot, my valor's coy, and shall be courted when you want it next. You know I ought to claim a victor's right. But you're the brother to divine Florindo, I durst not hurt the man she holds so dear. Was by Antonio's, not by Belleville's sword, this question should have been decided, sir. I must confess much to your braveries too, both now and when I met you last in arms. But I beg your pardon, for this mistake another time shall clear. This was some plot between you and Belleville, but I'll prevent you. Do not be modest now and lose the woman, but if we shall fetch her back, so... Do not speak to me. Egad, not speak to you, Egad, I'll speak to you, and I will be answered too. Leave me, I say, and leave me instantly. I will not leave you in this humor, nor till I know my crime. Yes, I'll tell you, sir. Is that not Wilmore? Haste, haste, and bring him back. The colonel's mad. I never saw him thus before. I'll after him, lest he do some mischief, for I'm sure Wilmore will not draw on him. Urgh, I am all rage. He loves her. I know, tis so. He broke his word last night. He that but, but yesterday fought for my favors and would have made his life a sacrifice to have gained one night with me, must now be hired and courted to my arms. I told you what would come on, but Moretta's an old doting fool. Why did you give him 500 crowns, but to set himself out for other lovers? You should have kept him poor, if you had meant to have any good from him. Oh, name not such mean trifles. Had I given him all, all my youth has earned from sin, I have not lost a thought or sigh upon it. But I gave him my eternal rest, my future joys, my heart, my virgin heart. Moretta, tis gone. Oh, curse on him. Here he comes. How fine she has made him, too. How now, turn shadow? Fly when I pursue and I follow when I fly. Stay, gentle shadow of my dove. There's a soft, kind look remaining yet. Well, sir, you may be gay. All happiness, all joys pursue you still. Fortune gives you every hour choice of new hearts and beauties. But no false man that I shall be revenged. Oh, pox all this whining. My business is to laugh and love. A pox on it. I hate your sullen lover. A man shall lose as much time to put you in human for now as would serve to gain a new woman. I scorn to cool that fire I cannot raise or do the drudgery of your virtuous mistress. A virtuous mistress? Why then what the devil should I do with a virtuous woman? Virtue is but an infirmity in women, a disease that renders even the handsome ungrateful. I will not answer for your mistress's virtue, though she be young enough to no, no guilt. What? Woman? <laughs> How strange you make it. Have you forgot the creature you entertained on the piazza last night? <laughs> ah, my mystic. Worth 200,000 crowns. Oh, how I long to be with her pox. I knew she was of quality. False man. And I see my ruin in your face. <laughs> how many vows? He breathed upon my bosom, <laughs> never to be unjust. 
Have you forgot so soon? <laughs> I was just coming to repeat them, but here's a humor indeed would make a man a saint. Would she be angry enough to leave me and command me not to wait on her? Must be Angelica. Aye, aye, tis she. My mad captain's with her too for all his swearing. All this unconstant humor makes me love him. Uh, uh, pray, uh, good grave gentlewoman, is not this Angelica? My too young sir, it is. I hope tis one from Don Antonio. I will not speak with him. Am I in humor to receive a lover? Uh, uh, not speak with him. Why, I'll be gone and wait your idler minutes. And I show yes, less obedience to the thing I love so fondly. Fine excuse this. Stay and hinder your advantage should I repay your bounty so ungratefully. Come hither boy, that I may let you see how much above the advantages you name I prize one minute's joy with you. Oh, you destroy me with this endearment. Death, how shall I get away? Madam, I've a friend that is dangerously sick. I see you're impatient. <laughs> yes, you shall stay. I missed my assignation with my mistake. Madam, um, you'll hardly pardon my intrusion when you shall know my business, and I'm too young to tell my tale with art. Pretty proceed. Nay, sir, you shall not go. Then I shall lose my dear mystic forever. Pox on it, she stays me out of spite. I am related, lady, madam, uh, to a lady, young, rich, nobly born, but has the fate to be in love with a young English gentleman. Strangely, she loves him. At first sight, she loved him, but did adore him when she heard him speak. For he, she said, had charms in every word that failed not to surprise, to wound, and conquer. Huh. My God, I hope this concerns me. Tis my false man he means. Would he were gone. This praise will raise his pride and ruin me. Well, since you are so impatient to be gone, I will release you, sir. Nay, then, I'm sure twas me that he spoke of. This cannot be the effects of kindness in her. No, madam, I've considered better on it and will not give you cause of jealousy. Uh, but, sir, I have a uh, business that. This shall not do. I know tis but to try me. Well, to your story, boy. Uh, with this addition to his other beauties, he won her unresisting tender heart. He vowed and sighed and swore he loved her dearly. And she believed the cunning flatterer and thought herself the happiest maid alive. Today was the point of time by both to consummate their bliss. The virgin altar and the priest were dressed and while she languished for the expected bridegroom, she heard he had paid his broken vows to you. Now I perceive the cause of thy impatience to be gone and all the business of this glorious dress. Damn the young prater, I know not what he means. <laughs> really, sweet youth, talk on. Thou mayst perhaps raise here a storm that may undo my passion and then I'll grant thee anything. <laughs> Madam, tis to intrigue you, you would not see this stranger, for if you do, she vows she is undone. You are undone. Oh, I shall burst with jealousy. Do you know the man you speak of? Yes, madam, he used to be in buff and scarlet. Thou, false as hell, what canst thou say to this? Thy heaven. Hold, do not damn thyself. Nor hope to be believed. Oh, perjured man. Is thus you pay my generous passion back? Why would you, sir, abuse my lady's faith? And use me so inhumane? A maid so young, so innocent. Ah, young devil. Dost thou not know my... Uh, Thy life 
is in my power. Or think my lady cannot be revenged. <laughs> so, so the storm comes finally on. <laughs> now thou art silent. Guilt has struck thee dumb. Oh, hadst thou still been so, I had lived in safety. Sweetheart, the lady's name and house quickly. I'm impatient to be with her. Her name, dear boy. Have you forgot it, sir? Oh, I, I perceive he's not to know I am stranger to his lady. Yes, yes, I do know, but I have forgot the... By heaven, such early confidence I never saw. Did I not charge you with this, mistress, sir, which you denied, though I beheld your perjury? <laughs> so, you have made sweet work here, my little mischief. Look, your lady be kind and good-natured, or I shall have it but a cursed bargain on it. Huh. Do I not know that face? By heaven. My little mystic, what a dull dog was I. Had I but looked that way, I'd known her. Madam, I have found the plot. Oh, Lord, what does he say? Am I discovered now? You see this young spark here? Who do you think this is? Aye, aye, he does know me. Nay, dear captain, I am undone if you discover me. Nay, nay, no cogging. She shall know what precious mistress I have. Will you be such a devil? Nay, nay. I'll teach you to spoil sport you will not make. A small ambassador comes not from a person of quality, as you imagine, and he says, but from a very errant mystic, the talkingest, prattingest, cattingest little animal thou ever sawst. What news you tell me? That's the thing I mean. Mean, mean that thing, that mystic thing. Thou mayst well be jealous of thy monkey or thy parrot as her. Well, I'm sure he lied, yet this vexes me. You may return, my little brazen head, and tell your lady that she, that till she be handsome enough to be beloved, or I dull enough to be religious, there will be small hopes of me. Did you not promise then to marry her? Not I, by heaven. You cannot undeceive my fears and torments till you have vowed you will not marry her. If he swears that, he'll be revenged on me for all my robberies. If it were possible I should ever be inclined to marry, it should be some kind young sinner that one has, generously enough to give a favor handsomely to one that can ask it discreetly, one that has wit enough to manage the intrigue of love, Oh, how civil such a wench is to a man that does her the honor to marry her. By heaven, there is no faith in anything he says. Madam, Don Antonio. Come hither. Oh, Antonio, he may be coming hither and he'll certainly discover me. I'll see him. Get my coach ready. It waits you, madam. This is lucky. What, madam, now I may be gone and leave you to the enjoyment of my rival? Dull man, be gone, and never let me see thy cousining face again, lest I relapse and kill thee. Uh, farewell, till you are in better humor. I'm glad of this release now for my mystic. With what willing haste he took his leave as if the longed for minute were arrived of some blessed assignation. In vain, I have consulted all my charms. In vain, this beauty prized. In vain, believed my eyes could kindle any lasting fires. Then since I am not fit to be loved, I am resolved to think on a revenge on him. <laughs> Scene three, a street, enter Florinda and Valeria in habits different from what they have been seen in. We're happily escaped, yet I tremble still. Love her and fear. Would Helena were here, I would fain have had her as deep in this mischief as we. She'll fare but ill else, I doubt. She pretended a visit to the Augustine 
be nuns, but I believe some other design carried her out. Pray heavens we fight on, we light on her. Prithee, what didst thou do to Callus? When I saw no reason would do good on her, I followed her into the wardrobe, and as she was looking for something in a great chest, I tumbled in her by the heel, snatched the key, locked her in, and left her bawling for help. Tis well you resolved to follow my fortunes, for thou darest never appear at home again after such an action. But to our business. I delivered your letter, your note to Belleville, and believe me, it came seasonably. For never was man in so desperate a condition. I told him of your resolution of making your escape today, if your brother would be absent long enough to permit you. If not, die rather than be Antonius. Thou shouldst have told him I was confined to my chamber upon my brother's suspicion that the business on the mola who was the plot laid between him and I. I said all this and told him your brother was now gone to his devotion and he resolves to visit every church till he finds him. Oh, heavens, he's here. And Belleville with him too? Walk boldly by him. I'll come at a distance, lest he suspects us. Ah, a woman. She throws a kind look back on you. <laughs> Death tis likely, wench, and that kind look shall not be cast away. I'll follow her. Prithee, do not. Do not, by heavens, and with such an invitation. Tis a mad fellow for a wench. Oh, Colonel, such news that will make you laugh in spite of fortune. What? One has had some damned trick put upon him, cheated, banged, or clapped. Cheated, sir. Rarely cheated of all but his shirt and drawers. The unconscionable whore, too, turned him out before consummation so that, traversing the streets at midnight, the watch found him in this fresco and conducted him home. By heaven, tis such a slight, and yet I durst as well have been hanged as laugh at him or pity him. He beats all that do but ask him a question and is in such a humor. Who is it that has met with this ill usage, sir? A friend of ours, whom you must see for mirth's sake. I'll employ him to give Florinda time for an escape. Uh, who is he? A young countryman uh, of ours, one that has been educated at so plentiful a rate, he yet ne'er knew the want of money, and it will be a great jest to see how simply he'll look without it. <laughs> Prithee, Fred, do go home and keep him in what pot in that posture till we come. I'm followed still. Oh, my brother too advancing this way. Good heavens, defend me from being seen by him. Ah, there she sails. She looks back as though she were willing to be boarded. It's not that my captain that has a woman in chase. It is not Angelica. Boy, follow these people at a distance and bring me account of where they go in. I'll find his haunts and plague him everywhere. Oh, my brother. Oh, what shall I do? My brother now pursues me. Will no kind power protect me from his tyranny? Here's a door open. I'll venture in. Here she went in. I shall remember this house. This is Belleville's lodge. She's gone in as readily as if she knew it. <laughs> Here's that mad fellow again. I dare not venture in. I'll watch my opportunity. I have lost her hereabouts. Pox on it. She must not escape me so. Scene changes to Blunt's chamber. Discovers him sitting on a couch in his shirt and drawers, reading. So, now my mind's a little at peace since I have resolved revenge. The pox! 
pox on this table for not bringing me home the clothes I bespoke. And I shall have these rogues come in and find me naked, and then I'm undone. But I'm resolved to arm myself. The rascals shall not insult over me too much. <sighs> A fine lady like Hall to cheat me thus without affording me a kindness for my money. The pox light on her. I shall never be reconciled to the sex more. She has made me as faithless as a physician, as uncharitable as a churchman, and as ill-natured as a poet. He is a cursed book, too. A warning to all young travelers that can instruct me how to prevent such mischiefs. Now tis too late. Oh, a, a man, heavens, how he's attired. S sir, S if, I'm, if I may not interrupt your meditations. <clears throat> <laughs> What's here? And is that not a she creature? A shurikin's tis. What a wretched thing art thou. Ha! Mm. Mm. Ch charitable sir, you've told yourself already what I am. A very wretched maid. For by a strange unlucky accident to seek a safety here <clears throat> and must be ruined if you do not grant it. Dost thou know, miserable woman, into what den of mischiefs thou art fallen? Dost not see something in my looks that frights thy guilty soul and makes thee wish to change that shape of woman for any humble animal or devil? For those were safer for thee and less mischievous. Alas, what mean you, sir? I mean, your com I must confess, your looks have something and it makes me fear. But I <clears throat> beseech you, as you seem a gentleman, pity a harmless virgin and take your, that takes your house for sanctuary. <laughs> Talk on, talk on, and weep, too, till my faith return. Do flatter me out of my senses again. A harmless virgin with a pox, as much one as t'other, at Shetlikens. Why, what the devil can I not be safe in my house for you? Oh, dare you be so cruel? Huh. What's here to do? I had shut this friend. I am glad thou art come to be a witness of my dire revenge. What's this? A person of quality too, who is upon the ramble to supply the defects of some grave, impotent husband? No, this has another pretense. Some very unfortunate accident brought her hither to take sanctuary here at Fool's Haven. Now, mistress of mine, what do you think of this? Well, stay, sir. I have seen you with Belleville, an English cavalier. For his sake, use me kindly. Belleville! Why, yes, sweeting, we do know Belleville. Sir, if you have any esteem for that Belleville, I conjure you to treat me with more gentleness. Pray, take this present. <laughs> a diamond. Why, tis a wonderful virtue now that lies in this ring. A mollifying virtue. Had shepherds, there's more persuasive rhetoric in it than all her sex can utter. I have no faith yet. 
Why, my saint gave me a bracelet too. A devil on her. But I sent my man to sell it today for necessaries, and it proved as as counterfeit as her vows of love. However, let it reprieve her till we see Belleville. That's hard, yet I will grant it. Oh, sir, the colonel has just come with a new friend uh, and a Spaniard of quality and talks of having you to dinner with them. To shut the guns, I'm undone. I would not see him for the world. Hawkeye, Fred, Lock up the wench in your chamber. Fear nothing, madam. Whatever he threatens, you're safe whilst in my hands. And, sirrah, upon your life, say I am not at home, or that I am asleep, or, or anything. Away. I'll prevent them coming this way. Act five, scene one, Blunt's chamber. A great knocking at his chamber door. Enter Blunt softly crossing the stage in his shirt and drawers as before. Ned, Ned Blunt, Ned Blunt. The rogues are up in arms. The shucklicans, this villainous Frederick has betrayed. They have heard of my blessed fortune. Ned Blunt, Ned, Ned. Why is dead, sir? Without dispute, dead, he has not been seen today. Let's break open the door. Here, boy. Ha! Break open the door. Tshutlikens, that mad fellow will be as good as his word. Boy, bring something to force the door. So, now must I speak in my own defense. I'll try what rhetoric will do. <clears throat> hold, hold. What do you mean, gentlemen? What do you mean? Oh, rogue, art alive. Privy, open the door and convince us. Yes, I am alive, gentlemen, but at present a little busy. How? Blunt grown a man of busyness. Come, come, open and, and let's see this miracle. No, 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 gentlemen. It is no great business, but I am at my devotion. Shirtlikens, will you not allow a man time to pray? T turned religious. Greater wonder than the first. Therefore, open quickly or we shall unhinge. We shall. This won't do. Why, hockey, Colonel, to tell you the plain truth, I am about a necessary affair of life. I have a wench with me. You apprehend me? The devil didn't, if they be so uncivil as to disturb me now. Oh, how a wench, nay, then we must enter. Come, come, lend me more hands to the door. Now heaved all together. So, well done, my boys. Talk <laughs> <laughs> ye, sir. Love out. <laughs> Your laugh quickly. Do you hear? Be gone. I shall spoil your sport else. To shut it, sir, I shall. The jest has been carried on too long. The plague upon my tailor. Death, how the horse dressed him, Faith. Sir, I'm, I'm sorry. Are you so, sir? Keep to yourself, then, sir. I am advise you, do you hear? For I can as little endure your pity as his mirth. In indeed, Wilmore, thou wert a little too rough with Ned Blunt's mistress. Call a person of quality whore and one so young, so handsome and so eloquent. <laughs> ah, ye sir, you know me and know I can be angry. Have a care. For the shutkins, I can fight too. I can, sir. Do you mark me no more? Why so peevish, good Ned? Some disappointments, a warrant. What? Did the jealous count her husband return just in the nick? 
devil, sir. Do you laugh? Look ye, <laughs> settle me a good sober countenance, and that quickly too. Or you shall know Ned Blunt is not. Unconscionable sinner to bring a lover so near his happiness, a vigorous, passionate lover, and then not only cheat him of all his movables, but his desires too. Ah, <laughs> oh, sir, a mistress is a trifle with blunt. He'll have a dozen the next time he looks abroad. His eyes have charms not to be resisted. There needs no more than to expose that taking person to the view of the fair, and he leads them all in triumph. Sir, though I'm a stranger to you, I am ashamed at the rudeness of my nation. And could you learn who did it would assist you to make an example of him? Why, I, there's one speak since now and hence me. And let me tell you, gentlemen, I should not have shooed myself like a jack pudding, thus to have made you mirth, but that I have revenge within my power. For now, for no, I have got the shirtlikins. She assaulted me here in my own lodgings and had doubtless committed a rape upon me had not this sword defended me. I knew not that, but on my conscience, she redeemed herself with a ring. Let's see it, Blunt. Huh? The ring I gave Florindo and we exchanged our vows. Come, come. Where's the wench? I, I let us see her. I can soon discover whether she be of quality for your diversion. She's in Fred's custody. Come, come, the key. Death, what shall I do? Say, gentlemen, give me the key. Nay, hold there, Colonel. I'll go first. Nay, no dispute. Ned and I have the property of her. Damn property, then we'll draw cuts. Come, the longest sword carries her. They all draw swords, forgetting Don Pedro being a Spaniard had the longest. The winch is yours. Hawks of his Toledo, I had forgot that. Um, sir, I'll conduct you to the lady. To hinder him will certainly discover Dost know, dull beast, what mischief thou hast done? Good heaven, defend me from discovery. Why, what a pox is not this my woman, the same I have followed, but now. Don Pedro here, oh, have I found you? Sir, the strangest accident, if I had breath to tell it. Is Florinda safe? Hell no well. I, I, is there Florinda? Is safe. <laughs> Why? Where's Florinda? Speak. I where indeed, sir. I wish I could inform you, but to no, hold you no longer in doubt. Oh, what will she say? She's fled away in the habit of one of her pages, sir. But Callus thinks you may retrieve her yet. If you make haste away, she'll tell you, sir, the rest, if you can find her out. Dishonorable, the girl, she has undone my ink. Sir, you see no my necessity in leaving you, and I hope you'll pardon it. My sister, I know, will make her flight to you. And if she do so, I shall expect she should be rendered back. My dear preserver, let me embrace thee. What the devil's all this? Come, come, make haste and get yourselves married quickly, for your brother will return again. I am so surprised with fears and joys, amazed to find you here in safety. I can scarce persuade my heart into a face of what I, I see. Uh, Harky Colonel, is that is this that mistress who has cost you so many sighs and so many quarrels with you? It is. Pray, give him the honor of your hand. Uh, this must be received then, and with give your pardon too. The friend to Belleville may command me anything. Death, what I might, is surprising beauty. Boy, 
Run and fetch a father instantly. I have a pardon to beg, but that shit, Lickens, I am so out of countenance that I am a dog if I can say anything to purpose. Sir, I heartily forgive you all. That's that's nobly, nobly said, said sweet, sweet lady. lady. Belleville, prithee, present her her ring again, for I find I have not courage to approach her myself. Sir, I have brought the father that you sent for. As well. well. And now, my dear Florinda, let's fly to complete that mighty joy we have so long wished and sighed for. And must not I see the struggling not tied? No. Thou shalt do us better service and be our guard, lest Don Pedro's sudden return interrupt the ceremony. Content. I'll secure the past. Sir, there's a lady without would speak to you. Conduct her in. I dare not quit my post. And sir, your tailor waits you in your chamber. Ah, some comfort yet. I shall not dance naked at the wedding. This can be none but my pretty mystic. Oh, I can see you follow as well as fly. Stand off, base villain. Ah, tis not she who art thou, and what's thy business? One thou hast injured, and who comes to kill thee for it. Ha, ah, prithee, on what acquaintance, for I know thee not. Behold this face, so lost to thy remembrance, and then and call all thy sins about thy soul and let them die with thee. <sighs> Angelica. Yes, traitor. Does not thy guilty blood run shivering through thy veins? Faith, hey, no, but my blood keeps its old ebbs and flows still, and that usual heat too that could oblige thee with a kindness had I but opportunity. Devil! Just wanton with my pain, have at thy heart. Hold, I hold thy hand a little. I am not now at thy le leisure to be killed. Hold and hear me. Death, I think she's in earnest. Oh, if I take not heed, my coward heart will leave me to his mercy. What have you, sir, to say? But should I hear thee, thou to talk away all that is breathed about me, and I have vowed thy death by all that is sacred. Aye, and there's an end of a proper handsome fellow that might have lived to have done good service yet. That's all I can say to it. Yet, I would give thee time for penitence. Faith, I thank God I have ever took uh, care to lead a good sober, hopeful <laughs> life, and I am of religion that teaches me to believe I shall depart in peace. Tell me how many poor believing fools thou hast undone, how many hearts thou hast betrayed to wit to ruin, yet these are little mischiefs to the ills thou hast taught mine to commit. Thou taught it love. Yet, t'was shrewdly hurt the while. Love that has robbed it of its unconcern, of all that pride, and in its room a mean, submissive passion was conveyed that made me humbly bow, which I ne'er did to anything but heaven. <sighs> Thou didst this. And with thy oaths, which on thy knees thou didst devoutly make, soften my yielding heart. And then I was content to have worn my chains, worn them with vanity and joy forever. Hadst thou not broke those vows that put them on, t'was then I was undone. <sighs> Angelica, that beauty has been too long tempting not to have made a thousand lovers languish. 
who no doubt have sworn like me that they all die in that faith? I do not think they did. No faithless man. Had I repaid their vows as I did thine, I would have killed the ungrateful that had abandoned me. By heaven, thou art brave, and I admire thee strangely. I wish I were that dull, that constant thing, which thou wouldst have to gain your credit. I'll pay you back your charity and be obliged for nothing but love. Well, that thou wert in earnest, I should pity thee and give thee leave to live, which for the public safety of our sex and my own private injuries I dare not do. Prepare. I will be no more tempted with replies. Oh, sure. Another word will damn thee. I've heard thee talk too long. Oh, Angelica. And Antonio. <laughs> what devil brought thee hither? Love and curiosity, seeing your coach at door, let me disarm you of this unbecoming instrument of death. Now, who are you, sir, that are so very wretched to merit death from her? One, sir, that could have made a better end of an amorous quarrel without you than with you. Oh, sure, tis some rival. Ha, ha! The very man took down her picture yesterday. The very same that set on me last night. Oh, blessed opportunity. Hold! You're mistaken, sir. Oh, by heaven, the very... Very same. Sir, what pretensions have you to this lady? Uh, sir, I don't used to be examined and am ill at all disputes, but this. Hold. You see, he's armed with certain death. And you, Antonio, I command you, hold. By all the passion, you've so lately vowed me. Ah, Antonio and Angelica. When I refuse obedience to your will, may you destroy me with your mortal hate. By all that's holy, I adore you so that even my rival, who has charms enough to make him fall a victim to my jealousy, shall live. Nay, and have leave to love on still. What's this I hear? Ah, thus. T'was thus he talked, and I believed. But now to show my utmost of contempt, I give thee life, which if thou wouldst preserve, live where my eyes may never see thee more, live to undo someone whose soul may prove so bravely constant to revenge my love. Antonio, stay. Don Pedro. <laughs> what coward fear was that prevented thee from meeting me this morning on the Molo? I sent my sword and one to do thee right, finding myself incapable to use a sword. But twas Florinda's quarrel that we fought, and you, to show how little you esteemed her, sent me your rival, giving him your interest. But I have found the cause of this affront. For when I meet you fit for the dispute, I'll tell you my resentment. Oh, I shall be ready, sir, ere long, to do you reason. I could find Florinda now, whilst my anger's high. I think I should be kind. Give her to Belleville in revenge. Hey, sir, I know not what you do, but I believe the priest within has been so kind. How? My sister Mary? I hope by this time she is embedded too, or he has not my longings about him. Dares he do thus? Does he not fear my power? Faith, not at all. If you will go in and thank him for the favor he has done your sister, so if not, sir, my power is greater in this house than yours. I have a damned surly crew here that will keep you till the next tide, and then clap you aboard my prize. 
My ship lies but a league off the Molo, and we shall show your Don shit a damned Tramontana Rover's trick. This rogue is a new mischief. Ha, ah, Pedro returned. Colonel Belleville, I hear you have married my sister. You have heard truth then, sir. Have I so? Then, sir, I wish you joy. How? <laughs> By this embrace I do, and I glad on it. Are you in earnest? By our long friendship and my obligations to thee, I am. The sudden change I'll give you reasons for it not. Come, lead me into my sister that she may know I now approve her choice. Ah, my mystic now, a thousand blessings on thee for this kindness. Egad, I was even in despair of ever seeing thee again, and I was even resolved to go aboard, condemn myself to my lone cabin and the thoughts of thee. How could you have left me behind? Kind. Would you have been so ill-natured? What? It would have broke my heart, child. But since we are met again, I defy foul weather to part us. And would you be a faithful friend now, if a maid should trust you? For a friend, I cannot promise. Thou art of a form so excellent, a face and humor too good for cold, dull friendship. I am parlously afraid of being in love. And you have not forgotten how severely you have used me. That's all one such use as you much such usage you must still look for to find out all your haunts, to rail at you, to all that love you, till I have made you love only me in your own defense, because nobody else will love. But hast thou no better quality to recommend thyself by? Faith none, Captain. Why, I should die a maid, and in a captain's hands, too, I do not understand. Thou hast one virtue I adore. Good nature. I hate a coy, demure mistress. She's as troublesome as a colt. I'll break none. No, give me a mad mistress. Nay, good captain, let's lose no time. My time's as precious to me as thine can be. Therefore, dear creature, since we are so well agreed, let's retire to my chamber. And if ever thou were treated with such savory love, come, my bed's prepared for such a guest, all clean and sweet as thy fair self. Tis but getting my consent, and the business is soon done. Let but a priest say amen to it, and I dare without fear or blushing. Hold, hold, no bug words. Priest, for the ad hangman. No, no, we'll have no vows, but love. Marriage is as certain a bane to love as lending money is to friendship. I'll neither ask nor give a vow, though I could be content to turn mystic and become a left-handed bridegroom to have the pleasure of working that great miracle of making a maid a mother if you durst venture. <laughs> and what shall I get? A cradle full of noise and mischief with a pack of repentance at my back? Can you teach me to weave inkle to pass my time with? I can teach thee to weave a true love's not better. So can my dog. Well, I see we are both upon our guard and I see there's no way to conquer good nature, but by yielding here. Give me thy hand, one kiss, and I am thine. One kiss. <laughs> I am resolved you shall have none for asking such a sneaking sum. He that will be satisfied with one kiss will never die of that longing. A good friend, single kiss. Is all your talking come to this? Ah, oh, farewell, Captain Single Kiss. Nay, if we part so, let me die like a bird upon a bough. By heaven, both the Indies shall not buy thee from me. I adore thy humor and will marry thee. And we are so of one humor, it must be a bargain. Give me thy hand. And now let the blind ones love and fortune do their worst. My God of mercy, Captain. <laughs> but hark ye, the bargain is now made. But it is not fit so we should know each other's names. 
that we have reason to curse one another hereafter. And people ask me, who says I gave to the devil? I may at least be able to tell what family you came of. Good reason, Captain. And where I have cause that I may know at whom to throw my blessings. I beseech you your name. I am called Robert the Constant. A very fine name. <laughs> Pray, was it your Faulkner or Butler that christened you? I hope you have a better. I am called Helena the Inconstant. Ha! Helena! <sighs> Helena! The very same! Oh, my brother. Now, Captain, show your love and courage. Stand to your arms and defend me bravely, or I am lost forever. What's this I bear? False girl, how come you hither and what's your business? Speak. Hold off, sir. You have leave to parley only. Faith, brother, my business is the same with all living creatures of my age. To love and be loved. And here's the man. Perfidious maid, hast thou deceived me to de deceive thyself in heaven? It's time enough to make my peace with that. Be you but kind, let me alone with heaven. Belville, I did not expect this false play from you. Was not enough you gained Florinda, which I pardoned, but your lewd friends too must be enriched with the spoils of a noble family? Faith, sir, I am as much surprised as, at this as you can be. Yet, sir, my friends are gentlemen and ought to be esteemed for their misfortunes since they have the glory to suffer with the best of men and kings. Tis true, he is a rover of fortune, yet a prince aboard his little wooden world. What's this to the maintenance of a woman of her birth and quality? Faith, sir, I can boast of nothing but a sword which does me right where'er I come and has defended a worse cause than a woman's. And since I loved her before I either knew her birth or her name, I must pursue my resolution and marry her. And is all your holy intent of becoming a nun debauched into a desire of man? Why, I have considered the matter, brother, and find the three thousand hundred crowns my uncle left me, and you cannot keep from me, will be better laid out in love than in religion and turn to as good as account. Let most voices carry it for heaven or the captain. A captain. A captain. A captain. Tis a clear case. Come, take her. I shall now be free from the fear of her honor. Guard it you now, if you can. I have been protector to it long enough. Faith, sir, I am of an opinion. A woman's honor is not worth guarding when she has a mind to part with it. Well said, Captain. There's no altering destiny, sir. Sooner than a woman's will. Therefore, I forgive you all and wish you may get my father's pardon as easily, which I fear. Tis very well, sir. Well, sir. Shirtkins, I tell you, tis damnable ill, sir. The Spanish heaven, good lord. Could the devil and my tailor devise no other punishment for me but the mode of a nation I abominate? What's the, what's the matter, Ned? Pray, view me round and judge. I must confess thou art a kind of an odd figure. In a Spanish habit, with a vengeance. A pillory were an easy call at this. Three handfuls high, and these shoes too are worse than the stocks, with the sole an inch shorter than my foot. In fine gentlemen, methinks I look altogether like a bag of bays stuffed full of fool's flesh. <laughs> methinks it is well. It makes thee look uncavalier. Um, Come, sir, settle your face. A ah, pox of my Spanish habit. Hark, what's this? Sir, as the custom is, the gay people in masquerade who make every man's house their own are coming up. 
Enter several men and women in masking habits with music. They put themselves in order and dance. Had shirt would were lawful to pull off their false faces that I might see if my doxy were not amongst them. Ladies and gentlemen, since you are come so apropos, you must take a small collation with us. Whilst we go, will to the good man within, who stays to give us a cast of his office? Have you no trembling at the near approach? No more than you have in an engagement or a tempest. <laughs> Cat, thou art a brave girl. And I admire thy love and courage. Lead on. No other dangers they can dread who venture in the storms of the marriage bed.